So time for a new video and today we're going to take a look at a couple of new paintings by Arnold Tupley which came to light at the end of last year. This is pre-Covid-19 of course. Um, these two paintings were in an auction in Switzerland. Um, they have swearing in them. I should give you a warning of that. Um, so if you are of a sensitive disposition or under 16 or something like that then maybe this isn't the video for you. However, um, I wanted to do these two paints together because at first glance they seem like they're quite similar, but in fact I think you'll find that they're really rather different. The first one's called Fuck Off, and the second one, Fuck. So what's the point of this? Is it an attempt at shock? Hardly seems likely since that kind of stuff has all been done already. Has been done for decades and decades. There's no shock left in it. Let me tell you about a very inadequate example I saw a year or two ago. Now, I'm not a fan of conceptual art for many reasons, but I take a look when I'm going to a gallery, like at the Tate Modern in London, for example. I'd been shopping that morning in Sainsbury's supermarket to get a few things for dinner, shoving the receipt in my pocket as I left. But that day, I just couldn't go to the studio. It wasn't a good day, hadn't been for a few days. Making art is hard. Sometimes you just have to take a moment to breathe before pushing forward. So I decided to go to the Tate Modern. Sometimes I just go to take a look around, get a bit of culture possibly, walk over the bridge from St Paul's. It's a great thing to do once in a while, looking down the Thames with the dome of St Paul's Cathedral to one side and the chimney of Tate Modern on the other. Anyway, I was wandering through and there was some new hanging or a free conceptual show or something, mostly junk as it usually is, but two things stood out as being exceptionally annoying. Looking at the wall next to one of the open doors, I saw a receipt. Not on the floor, but simply attached to the wall. I forget how now, but attached to the wall it was. A little surprising, I'll grant you, but having already registered that the branding at the top of the receipt was the same as the branding I had at the top of the receipt in my pocket from that morning, I then noticed that there was the very traditional label next to it, identifying it as a work of art with a title or untitled, as I do not recall, and a date and list of materials, etc. I'm sure it also had its own very special code too, since it was clearly a very valuable thing being in Tate Modern. I try not to dismiss out of hand as a rule, so I went in for a closer look to check if there was some detail within that made it all worthwhile. After all, half a bar of chocolate is better than no chocolate at all. The list of purchases, of which there were not that many, maybe five to ten, something like that, were completely uninteresting and unimaginative, nothing creative or noteworthy in any way, to such an extent that all I can really remember from the entire experience is that the receipt in my pocket was considerably more interesting than what was being presented to me on one of the exhibition walls in the world famous Tate Modern. Okay, so I can remember two of the things that were on that receipt, lettuce and tomatoes, I think. Someone having a rather boring salad, I'd guess, especially since I can't remember anything else they got. I think there might have been a cucumber. Other than that, it was all very normal, 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 normal. My receipt, on the other hand, I can vividly remember it had two items which elevated it to a far superior position. I had prawns, and I had whiskey. I'd clearly won that fight and quelled my anger at being told it was art by reminding myself that I had prawns and I had whiskey, and regardless of it being a bad few days, I was sure to end this day well. Outside that room, a little way off nearer the stairs, as far as I recall, was another work. Not a pile of rubbish in the corner, which I have seen more than once purporting to be art, and not a lazily arranged load of odd random stuff, either made or found, for which the artist, if no one else, has acute admiration. No, it was another piece of paper attached to the wall, but this time by a different artist. Now, I can't remember who, other than I recognise the name as having produced a number of crappy non-art works straight from the I will always be a childish school kid, even though I'm now nearly 60 school of art. It was a plain piece of printer paper, A4, though if I remember correctly it had actually been typed, or at least looked as if it had been typed. Just two words were on that page. The start of the first line. Yes, you've guessed it. Fuck off. And capitals too. 
I quickly dismissed the fact that it had been typed and was an everyday paper as having no legitimate importance, since they didn't relate to anything or each other in any artistic way. They were simply the vehicles that the artist had chosen to impart his valuable artistic thoughts. The only content, therefore, were those two words, the real meat in this rather anemic sandwich. Now, I found this puerile. They clearly had run out of anything to say and just went with a personal attack, telling you or whomever else to fuck off without any expression or feeling other than those capitals. I could even be remembering that wrong and I'm just pretending to myself that they were capitals to give them a bit of leeway, a bit of credit for something. The point is, it meant nothing. There was no art, no artistry, no explanation or any clue as to why or how or what. It was just simply childish. A sixth form, maybe 17 or 18 years old, stuck forever with a body that grows old while their intellect remains resolutely a child. Back to Tupley. So was Tupley doing the same thing? Am I accepting of his declaration while poo-pooing others? Aren't they both just as childish? Well, the production of a work of art is a most important and delicate thing. How you say what you say is everything. It doesn't matter how much of a genius you are, if you are shouting at people aggressively or talking in tongues or just typing it on a piece of plain paper without any expression or context, it conveys nothing. You're not making contact with anyone other than those who find your lack of ability in making contact as interesting in itself. But Tupley, never afraid of expressing himself through the medium he chose as well as the subject, just went on for full-on expression. Fuck off! The way he paints it, the colours, the stammer in the first F, he means it, he really means it. And he means it to you, and art, and the art world, and dealers, and friends, and enemies, and family, and the whole fucking world. There are only two ways this expression is usually used. One is between friends. An alternative might be, don't be silly, or you're joking, or come on mate, you can't do that. The other way is aggressive indicating your wish that whomever it is addressed to removes themselves from your presence forthwith. It is in this latter sense that Topley is painting here, as I think is self-evident by the manner in which he paints it. The second painting, though, is rather different, where fuck off is clearly an instruction. Fuck, on its own, has a rather different meaning. It is an exclamation. Could be good, could be bad, could be just the way you talk, Though, if you liberally pepper your conversation with the word fuck, I would guess that putting it in a painting on its own doesn't really work for you since its meaning to you is too general, too normal. To use it as the entire content of a painting, it has to have something rather more specific behind it. It could be the kind of word you use when something is really unusual to you, or perhaps you have just reached a crossroads and are not sure which way to go, or even if getting to this crossroads was the right thing to do in the first place. The way Tupley paints it in this second painting seems to me to be a little prosaic. To me, it has some energy, sure, but that energy is more concentrated on the way the word looks rather than is expressed as in the first painting. It is more interesting to look at than a piece of paper, certainly, but I feel here he has lost his way a little, that it looks more like a design than a statement of anything. It's almost as if he has come to a dead end, and he is tired. The path finally dwindles to nothing, and he realises he is nowhere. So with a final flourish, utilising the only skills he has garnered from time spent on this particular journey of how to paint words, he uses a little flamboyance, as there is nothing left for him to do. To better understand the difference between these two paintings, let me put it like this. Which painting would you rather meet going down a dark alley late at night? Fuck. Or... Fuck off!